from the heart of God to the heart of my teachers and to my heart. I touch all, we touch all of your heart, your crown, your soul with divine love, with inner healing, with sweetness, inner beauty and divine bliss. Let all of this manifest spiritually, mentally, emotionally and physically in every cell of your body. So be it. Inhale the blessing, hold your breath, exhale, share this with your families and your loved ones, inhale the blessings, the love, hold, exhale, share this with your friends, inhale the blessing, hold, exhale, share this with the entire earth. That this is an ancient art. It is a path, a shortcut to happiness. Initially, I didn't think it could go beyond healing. Within two months, we were back on track, normal. The business was booming, and since then, it's been going great guns. The doctor said it was a miracle for our baby. And in one day, the blood clots were out of my system. Pranic healing was um, a huge lifesaver for me, literally. From the wheelchair to the crutches, and now I'm able to walk again. Anyone with two hands and a willingness to learn can be a pranic healer. Whether you choose God or Allah or, or, or any other system, the ultimate thing is that there's prosperity everywhere. Today, for many, many years, I haven't had a problem with sinusitis. I don't get headaches. I haven't fallen sick. You have to experience pranic healing to become a true believer in it. Once you experience the effect that it has on your health and on your emotions, it absolutely changes your life. Pranic healing is a very, very advanced form of energy healing therapy that has been synthesized by a great teacher named Grandmaster Twa Kok Sui into something that ordinary people can easily learn and can easily apply to their lives. Everything in pranic healing is energy. It's no drug, no touch therapy. In pranic healing, we have two principles. One is a principle of self-recovery and the other is a principle of life force. If we think about it, when someone dies, the organs still exist. The heart is still there, there's still blood, the brain. What is it that stops the heart from beating? Or what is it that stops or takes the life out of the system? According to ancient Indian tradition, this energy or this literally life force that keeps the body alive is called prana. Prana called differently in different languages, holds the same meaning across cultures. But the concept remains the same across the globe. It is the energy constant. Everything in nature has prana. That includes you, me and us all. For years, science has dedicated itself to find the secret of prana. But in spite of its latest gadgets and technologies, science has not been able to solve the greatest mysteries of the universe. Prana is a concept that every living human being can be made aware of, as we are all born with it. But Prana is not a concept that is only Indian. You know, in Hebrew it's called Rua, in, in other languages it's called Numa. So, all over the world, they accept prana as chi, as ki, as a life force that keeps us alive. It's not a, just an Indian term. Prana is that life energy which keeps the body alive and healthy. Pranic healing is an ancient science and art of healing that utilizes prana to heal the whole physical body. When the person is in balance, when the person is sick, something happens to the body. The body, this physical body, okay, has um, an energy body already, how should we say, experimented, seen, 
And this is what we work on, this energy body we call the etheric body. Normally, or more commonly, it is called the aura. Now, when a person is sick, the aura is affected. The aura becomes dirty. We call that the dirty energies. So, pranic healing is based on the principle of deceased energy. So, what do we do? We clean up this deceased energy and we replace this disease energy with clean energy. So it is a principle of cleansing and energizing. Pranic healing, amongst other esoteric sciences, deals with the aura and its manipulation. It is a technique where the healer uses his or her hands, moving in a set pattern to cleanse and energize the diseased aura. Cut. In Pranic Healing, Master Shua describes the energy body in three parts, the inner aura, the health aura and the outer aura. This illustration will help to explain what we're talking about. The inner aura is an energy field that interpenetrates the physical body and extends beyond it by about four to five inches. When we say interpenetrates the body, what we mean is it's like a sponge that's soaked in water. When a sponge is soaked in water, the water is inside the sponge and outside. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the inner aura is both inside the body and extends beyond the body. As can be seen in this illustration, the inner aura follows the contours of the body. And in fact, in his book, Mastua calls it the invisible physical body. And it is that. Just as we have two eyes in the physical body, there are two energy eyes in the energy body. You have an energy heart, an energy liver. And in pranic healing, this is the focus of our healing work. Just like in the physical body, we have very important organs. Within our inner aura, we have very important chakras or called energy centers. Now these energy centers are like power station that absorb energy and distribute it to the energy body around and also our physical organs. Generally accepted by other esoteric sciences are seven chakras which are connected to each of the endocrine glands. But in pranic healing, we deal with a total of 11 chakras and more. Corresponding to the blood vessels are what we call the, the nadis or the meridians. So we work on this, especially the chakras and the aura. In pranic healing, we study how to use the center of the palms to absorb what we call prana or life force and transfer it to people for healing purposes. The palm used as a tool to bless or transfer positive energy has been a symbol through ages of all divine representations. Pranic healing besides using the hands also uses an external tool called the bioplasmic disposal unit. A solution of water and salt used to neutralize negative energy. This is very, very interesting. If a person gets sick, if a human being gets sick, okay, then all the other, you know, aspects of the human being can get sick. What about our finances? You know, what about our wallets? They get sick in that, you know, in another sense. So healing can be done on any aspect of, of, uh, of, of mankind. So we have healing of, uh, I would say the wallet, right? <laughs> healing of our finances, healing of a business, healing of our, um, how do you call that? Our projects, our goals, our... So every aspect of life is part and parcel of uh, Pranic Healing. The founder of Pranic Healing is Master Chua Koksui from the Philippines. A seeker and a businessman with a scientific bent of mind. He spent over 20 years in the research and development of prana and the technique of pranic healing. He also introduced Twin Hearts Meditation, opening the doorways to the heart and the mind, and Arhatic Yoga. 
showing each seeker the path. His teachings really do cross all cultural barriers, all religious barriers. Um, no matter what culture or religious background you're from, there's a universality of the teachings. I don't know how to explain it. You're there on a physical plane, but you're also with him on another plane. I met him in about maybe 93, 94, and there's been no looking back ever since. He never ceases to amaze any one of us. I mean, every time you meet him, there's always something new which you can go home and say, oh my God. We are thankful, I'm thankful that I could meet him physically, spend time with him, was guided by him. And he has left the world a fabulous gift. We are blessed that we have a teacher who explains us in such simple ways. The, the simplicity in the teaching is phenomenal. Master is a master of synthesis. He's a genius. Uh, the interesting part about Master is that he himself is a scientist. And being a chemical engineer, he has brought down the teachings, he has made them so simplified that it's like a cookbook. So if somebody wants to heal, you don't have to remember everything. You open the book, you follow the steps, at the end of it you have a good recipe. In healing terms, you have somebody who is healed. If more than 95% of the time you get the same result following the same techniques, it is scientific in scientific terms. And pranic healing proves that, that if you follow the healing protocol, you will get the result. Proven time and time again, pranic healing branches out from the healing of the body to healing of all aspects of life. Based on the universal principles of prana, Master Choa Koksui teaches more techniques to heal the different aspects of life, such as the Kriya Shakti, pranic Feng Shui, psychic self-defense, higher clairvoyance, super brain yoga, and much more. I came into pranic healing when I was in South Africa. I was working in an HIV AIDS orphanage there and heard about the course through a family member and knew with every cell of my being that I had to be on that course. So I felt very drawn um, to making sure I attended and have not regretted it since. Unfortunately, this time on my birthday, I was very, very ill. And uh, I had developed something called um, a thrombosis on my lower back, which is a collection of, of blood clots, which are pushing up against the nerve underneath your tailbone. I couldn't walk, I couldn't sit, I couldn't go to the bathroom, I couldn't even speak. Uh, due to my own personal relationship experience, um, my heart kind of had a scattering because of a relationship that broke up. I didn't realize it at the time. It obviously was a lot more deep and a lot more connected than I realized. Uh, in order to heal from that hurt that I was going through in my heart, I, I was looking for many different ways to get myself back together again. My father took me to the doctor and he said that I should go for surgery immediately to remove the blood clots. Going through some of the magazines still searching, I found Prani Keeling, a center that was doing therapies and healing. So at night I sit with a picture of, of Grandmaster Choa Kok Sui and I was talking to him, just to the picture because I was just like, please listen to me, this is my birthday. And I was crying and I was like, you have to do something, you know. You said you'd take care of us and I don't want to start my, my year this way and you have to just please help me and just take this pain away. I learned the healing technique, started using it on myself. My heart still felt a little bit scattered. Um, eventually in the healing process and studying, what I found was that pranic healing was a bridge to spirituality. Almost immediately, I'm, I'm not joking, immediately speaking to him, I just felt this blissful <laughs> feeling just spreading across my body and I fell asleep immediately, within five minutes, which was unbelievable because I, without painkillers I couldn't sleep. And once I found Master Chao Kok Sui, the Guru, Arhatic Yoga and the spiritual practices, the heart started coming back together little by little, one tiny bit at a time. Two, three hours later, 
at about uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, I woke up <laughs> and the blood clots had dis dissolved. They were out. They were out of my system. I hadn't even started taking the full course of antibiotics. And in one day, the blood clots were out of my system. And this is the same day that the doctors told me that you'll, I'll have to have surgery. And it was unbelievable. The next day I was out, I was celebrating with my family and friends and it was like nothing had ever happened. My heart's come back together and my soul's come back together. Um, I'm holding an energy of uh, myself, my guru and so much more, which I didn't experience before. Um, a broken heart sometimes is something that is very hard to heal or to find. But with the blessings of the Guru and the teachings of the Guru, it comes back together again. And a heart that is healed and held together is a heart that can flow. The energy just flows through you and the energy connects you. The meditation on Twin Hearts is a very powerful meditation technique. It brings down a tremendous amount of divine energy into the person. Now, divine energy enters the body through the crown chakra, one of the chakras in the body, which is located above the head. While doing meditation on Twin Hearts, divine energy pours down into the crown chakra, and from the crown chakra it enters into the whole body. The effect of this meditation is cumulative. That means the more frequently you do the meditation, the more divine energy enters your system. Now, the technique is very simple. The first step is to activate the heart chakra, not directly the crown chakra. First, the heart chakra has to be activated. When this technique is done, it allows the crown chakra to become even bigger. It's called the meditation on twin hearts because the heart chakra, a duplicate or a twin of this heart chakra is found in the center of the crown chakra. So when people who can see the energy body, people who can see the chakras, people who are clairvoyant, when they look at the heart and the crown chakras, they see in the center of the crown chakra, a replica, a duplicate or a twin of the heart chakra. That's why it's called the meditation on twin hearts. You develop uh, a sense of inner peace. In the beginning, that sense of peace may last for a few seconds. But the more frequently you do this meditation, that feeling of peace from within becomes longer and longer and longer. You start to grow spiritually. Your spiritual development moves at a more accelerated pace. You become a better person, you become a more spiritual person, you have a greater influence on the things around you, on people around you, you can produce more results, you get tired less and less often, you have more energy for everything. Your mind is very 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 clear and you can see things, you can hear things, you get insights, you have a uh, what they call intuition coming in and showing you solutions to problems that already that are that are there in your life when you do this meditation you can bless certain areas in the world where things are not going right so trouble spots in the world people where people are hungry where there's a famine or people are fighting where there's a war people are dying, people are sick. Uh, in your own home, from your own place, from your own country, you don't have to travel to that place in order to be of help. You can do it from your own place just by doing the meditation and blessing that particular troubled spot in the world. So you don't have that helpless feeling. If some tragedy occurs, uh, uh, an area in the world is hit by a tsunami or an earthquake, you do your twin hearts together with a group of friends and you bless that part of the world. So in that way, 
you feel you have contributed to something. Since a young age, um, I had suffered from uh, rheumatoid arthritis and um, I tried all kinds of alternative medicine from a doctor to another doctor, from um, some healing uh, medicine also, but um, nothing much I've done. When our second child was born, the day that he was born, doctor said he's not going to survive. I saw a flyers with master, um, and it says pranic healing and uh, learn how to heal yourself. So it was a real shock for us. I mean, we could do nothing about it. I was in wheelchair. I could not stand on my feet at all. So, okay, <laughs> okay, and. So I was in wheelchair back then and Grandmaster, when he saw me, because he, he, he knew me from the past and he told me, what, what are you doing? What's happening to you? So he said, okay, let's do healing. We, uh, we, had, we took the help of a healer in Calcutta and we started taking healing for my Farah child who was into ventilators with pipes all over and I mean, it was... <laughs> I mean, I had not even seen him, but he was totally into ventilator and pipes all over his body. And we, this was the last choice that we had, so we went for it. And then he started to do healing on me, and suddenly he said, okay, get up now, start to walk. So I said, okay, I got up and start to walk. <laughs> it was incredible, from two months of really intense, intense, incredible pain and being not able to even get out of the bed and put, sit, um, suddenly I was able to walk again. Within a day or two, the doctor said it was a miracle for a baby. Uh, it's been a long journey, but from the wheelchair to the crutches and now I'm able to walk again. We came into pranic healing because of that. And he's a, he's a two-year-old boy now. And he's absolutely all right. In all, it must have started about seven years ago, although I didn't know about it. Um, and then so, about four or five years ago, I finally took the decision to, to stop my pain. And that's when the, commit, uh, the attempt committed suicide happened. And um, that's when I was officially declared clinically depressed. The first case with my mother was actually a toothache. So I borrowed a book, master's book in the healing center. And I just followed the steps in the book, the pranic healing book. It looked simple. I thought, master kept saying, don't believe on these techniques blindly. You should be willing to experiment. So that's what I did. I, I liked that approach. I didn't like... Um, people telling me to accept things blindly. So I, I really like that approach of Master. So anyway, the, the toothache disappeared in, in maybe half hour of, of pranic healing. It's only been a year, year and a half that I've been out of it, so I'm pretty happy now. It's all good. <laughs> and then I think my next, my next case was my sister who was having migraine for maybe more than 10 years. And in one, one session of pranic healing, maybe 15 minutes of pranic healing treatment, her migraine of more than 10 years never came back. Pranic healing was um, a huge lifesaver for me, literally. So, very, very grateful to it. I had a very bad attack of spondylitis and uh, Acharya Hector healed me and I was in Chennai at that time. I also learnt my pranic healing then because it was very fascinating, interesting that our hands could heal.
uh, how this happened to me is I was at a lecture uh, a few years ago, I think it was about four or five years ago, and uh, I was sitting in the um, audience and I was sitting on one of those um, uh, donut cushions because I had broken my tailbone and I was in agony for the last past four months. I had gone to several different doctors to have that, my tailbone treated and I was on anti-inflammatory which affected my stomach so I couldn't take that. Then uh, painkillers which made me sleepy and drowsy so I couldn't take that. Then at the last resorts they have offered me uh, to inject my tailbone with cortisone injections. Well, that uh, did not look very attractive to me, that proposition, so I basically decided to live with my pain. And I was going around with my little cushions everywhere, and uh, here I am at this particular convention, and someone tapped my shoulders and asked me, why are you sitting on this cushion? And I said, oh, well, look, here's my long story, my sad long story. And she tells me, well, you don't have to sit on this. Uh, I do pranic healing, and, and can, you know, I can help you. I came to pranic healing about 14 years ago. Initially, pranic healing was just a form of healing to relieve pain, mainly physical pain, which I did get relief from. She basically tells me to stand there and uh, close my eyes, put the tongue to the roof of my mouth, and I'm going, all right. And I I'm, was I'm expecting touch, and I didn't get touched. All of a sudden, I'm uh, opening my eyes because I'm hearing sounds of breathing and um, hand motions, and I'm looking at her and I'm going, what on earth is she doing? And life was just going by. I had my two sons married by then and I hadn't really found a sort of what I wanted to do with my life other than just being a housewife. I'd always wanted to do something and prani healing interest was very interesting at that time. But initially I didn't think it could go beyond healing. Uh, she told me after uh, the, uh, the session that I would start feeling some changes in my tailbone within 20 minutes. And of course, I thanked her, not believing that this was going to be so, because nothing had been touched and uh, I didn't see where any effect had been done. I go back and sit back on my little cushion into the uh, conference room and maybe an hour later, another tap on my shoulders and uh, this person comes back to me and said, how do you feel? As I went into this journey into pranic healing. I realized that this was more than healing, it was a way of life. So I started moving my body a little bit, testing the tailbone and the rotation and realizing that I did have some relief. At first I thought, no, power suggestion cannot be. It changed my way of thinking, it changed life for us. Gradually we were very lucky, I was very lucky all my sons, I've got three sons, my daughter-in-laws and my husband, my granddaughter, learned pranic healing. All our thought forms changed overnight. Master taught us how to live, how to live together as a family. So from there, the journey of learning pranic healing at all levels, including Aryartic Yogi, and I am going to India now under the teaching of masters. I'm learning so much each, uh, each and every time that I am with master. The teaching that he has given me has helped me to be able to use my pranic healing into my healing with all my patients. I see between 40 and 50 patients a week. Every single one of them are pranically cleansed. This is the power of the therapy is that I can clean the disease energy, the negative energy that my clients come with. Therefore, my, my therapy are so much more effective and so much faster to be applied, moving perception, moving cause. Not only I can treat symptoms, but I also can go to cause, disintegrate cause, which is an unbelievable process. So this is the great gifts that he has given us for healing and scanning but I would also like to share one more thing the real purpose of pranic healing is arhatic yoga Master Chawa introduced to the world arhatic yoga he called it the synthesis of yogas and the yoga of synthesis. Uh, 
for the ordinary person, spiritual progress is like climbing up a mountain. But you take the slow, long, but easy path up to the top of the mountain. So the long, slow, easy path is okay for ordinary people. Not too much uh, uh, chaos. Not, it's, it's not too much hardship. You know, the, the slope is easy. Now, uh, this happens because it's slow. This happens over several lifetimes. But eventually, everyone spiritually progresses. According to Master Chua, when you practice Arctic Yoga, you don't walk around the mountain, you don't climb up the mountain, you fly. Now, the problem there is, that means you have to build your own wings, build your own apparatus, basically. And that is what Arhatic Yoga does for you. You develop the spiritual bodies to the point where they become your vehicles to fly to the top of the mountain. Arhata means you have the capacity or you are given the stature to become a celestial being, the next dimension, the higher dimensions. Once you are clear about the goal and the methods are given to you, it's very easy for you to evolve very fast. This is his greatest contribution, the Arhatic Yoga, which will change the whole globe. So Arhatic Yoga is uh, this help, okay? Uh, to facilitate and accelerate the evolution of the soul. Pranic healing is so vast. It's, it's, it's like a rainbow of many colors, you know, like the coat of many colors, because it can be applied in so many, so many, so many ways. Pranic healing helps in healing treating a business, pranic agriculture, for one's goals and objectives. Pranic healing accompanies pregnant women, relationship healing, partners between couples in the office, you know, workplace, and then the relationship of fam within families. And that's what pranic healing does. So after 25 years of searching, we found pranic healing. I have three boys, three beautiful boys at that time. Um, they took all the pranic healing workshops. Since that basic workshop, they took all the workshops that we could handle. We're so thirsty, we're so excited that every workshop we could handle, my husband and I attended it with the boys. So when the kids were growing, because they know the teachings, that they cannot lie. If they lie, the aura will shrink. <laughs> if they lie, if they steal, it's not good for the soul energy, all these teachings are there, the virtues. I see how they, they apply the teachings in their lives. Because in pranic healing, as I said, I don't expect them to be healers, but when they're hurt, they know how to take care of themselves. They remove the pain. When they're tired, mom, can you heal me? Okay. Even we're traveling, they will call. I got injured. I'm a wrestler. One of them is a wrestler, two of them. They play sports, they get hurt. I'm traveling. Mom, can you heal me? We do distant healing. Pranic feng shui, super brain, pranic steroids. <laughs> they know how to apply that in looking for a job, looking for a college for them. They invoke for angels. <laughs> they were taught, we were taught to invoke for the higher beings, you know, whoever you believe in. One thing with pranic healing, we, we respect all religions. Whatever religion you belong to, you call whoever your God is. So we are Christians, so we call angels, Jesus Christ, Mary, and they invoke for the angels. They know when to call them, when to employ them. So looking for jobs, looking for, for a good school, they got it. They got it. When others are unemployed from college, you know, they fresh graduates from college, their classmates are still unemployed for one year, they got a job. Is the companies are waiting for them. <laughs> I'm a corporate lawyer and a partner in a law firm, Sedhu and Associates. One particular instance which I wish to narrate, which how pranic healing helped me in my business and my profession, and it had amazing results. Uh, it was in, in the year 2002 that we had moved to a new office, and my profession had I'd always been doing very well in my profession. And suddenly in that year, 
when we moved to the new office, our revenues almost dropped by half and we had no clue what was happening. And I didn't know what to do. And suddenly I heard that you know, the Grand Master was holding a course in Hyderabad on Pranic Feng Shui and Kriya Shakti. I checked my jet air miles and I found that I had exactly the miles to buy me a return ticket to Hyderabad. So I went there. I did the course and applied the principle of Pranic Feng Shui and Kriya Shakti. Within two months, we were back on track, normal. The business was booming and since then, it's been going great guns. According to one guy, he said his problem is not earning money. His problem is where to spend the money. You know, a better problem to have definitely than not to have money. So you have a unique uh, guru in, in Master Chao Hook Sui. Uh, there are many spiritual teachers around, but you can't come to them for business advice. At the Pranic Healing Center, we keep having a lot of people coming to us with various kinds of problems, whether it be physical, emotional, mental. I found that there is always something of Master's teachings which can be used to help them in some way or the other. Master's teachings are so profound that they can impact at every level. And we have yet to see a person, whether a healer or not, not be touched by his teachings. difficult to learn pranic healing? The answer is no. Pranic healing is not difficult to learn. For somebody with average intelligence, but very, very interested in learning the art, the science and art of pranic healing, they can learn this in two days. Now, after learning two days, they have to continue practicing for the next several months in order to become proficient. Intellectual knowledge alone is not enough. Regular practice is necessary in order to become proficient to, in order to become a proficient pranic healer. When you're applying any of the pranic healing techniques, it is highly recommended that you connect your tongue to your palate. This is simple. Curl your tongue upwards and connect the tip of your tongue to the roof of the mouth. Like this. It doesn't matter where you connect your tongue to the palate. What is important is the connection between the tip of your tongue and your palate. When these two are connected, it enhances your energy level. It connects the front energy channels and the back energy channels. This gives you more energy to work with and to heal with. This posture or this connection of the tongue to the palate can be maintained and it's preferable to be maintained throughout the healing, throughout the practice of the seven basic steps. Pranic healing is simple. It's easy to learn, it's easy to apply. In just a few minutes, you can learn the basic principles and techniques of pranic healing, practice them, and actually use it to heal yourself, your friends, your family at home. There are just seven steps to pranic healing. 
and what we will discuss in the next few minutes is what these seven steps are and how you apply them. The first step of pranic healing is called sensitizing of the hands. To sensitize the hands, press the center of your palm with your thumb. Do it for a few seconds and then repeat the process on the other palm. Next, press your fingertips gently on both the hands. Place your palms about 6 inches or 15 centimeters apart facing each other. Inhale and exhale slowly. Keep your hands relaxed, your shoulders, your arms relaxed and just be aware of the centers of your palms, be aware of your fingertips. You can keep your eyes open and look at your palms or you can close your eyes. Inhale and exhale slowly and deeply. Slowly move your hands apart. Slowly bring your hands back together again. Do this again. Move your hands apart slowly. Move your hands together again. Now rotate your hands. Very slowly rotate. Keep your arms relaxed, your hands, your fingers relaxed. Reverse and rotate. Inhale and exhale slowly. What do you feel? If you're trying this at home right now, many of you may feel some sensation between your hands. The sensation may be warmth. You may feel a sort of pressure between your hands. You may feel a tingling sensation on your palms. Some of you, if you're more sensitive, may even feel a whirling sensation in your hands. All this is common. These are normal sensations when you're working with energy, when you're feeling energy. Once you've learned how to sensitize your hands, which is step one, the second step of pranic healing is scanning. Scanning is a procedure whereby you use this ability to feel energy to measure a person's aura, to feel the extent of the aura at different parts, near the shoulders, near the hips, near the legs, near the abdomen. And once you can feel and measure the aura, you can figure out where there are imbalances. To learn scanning, it is highly recommended that you attend a pranic healing workshop where you can be trained under the guidance of an authorized pranic healing instructor and practice and develop the skill under the guidance of an instructor. It's easy. A few weeks of practice and your scanning can be extremely effective and extremely accurate. The third step of pranic healing is sweeping or cleaning. Sweeping or cleaning is one of the key techniques in pranic healing. In fact, it's probably unique in pranic healing. The concept behind sweeping is simple to understand. If you have a cup of coffee and that cup of coffee holds coffee from yesterday, we're not going to just fill in new coffee today. We're going to pour out the old coffee, the stale coffee, and then fill up the cup. The same concept applies with pranic healing. Before we apply fresh, healthy energy or prana, life force, to your patient or to the affected part, we remove the old used up energy first. Once the old energy has been removed, then we can put in fresh energy. This is how nature works. General sweeping consists of two steps. The first step of general sweeping is applied using the cupped hands technique. To use the cupped hands technique, you need to have your fingers together, your hands slightly cupped with both palms together. You apply the sweeping from above the head of your patient all the way down to the feet. The intention should be to clean the aura. The second step involves using the spread fingers technique to comb the health rays or, the, or to clean the health aura. The spread fingers technique involves keeping your fingers apart, slightly overlapped initially, and comb the health rays again from above the head down to the feet. After we apply general sweeping, the next step is to apply localized sweeping. 
Local eye sweeping is applying the pranic healing cleansing techniques on the specific affected parts of the body. For example, if your patient or the person you're treating has a problem in the throat area, could be a cough, could be a sore throat, could be mumps, tonsillitis, then local eye sweeping is affected on the affected part, which is the throat. If your patient has a problem with the abdominal area, constipation, loose bowel movement, or just a stomach ache, the healing would be applied on the abdominal area, on the navel area. Similarly, you can apply the localized sweeping wherever the patient needs help, wherever the patient has some sort of a pain or discomfort. To apply localized sweeping, you need to keep your hands slightly cupped and sweep the affected area 30 times in sets of five. Like this, one, two, three, four, five. Grab hold of the dirty energy that has been dislodged by the sweeping process and flick into the waste disposal unit. The sweeping can be done with either hand. It can be done with the left hand as well. 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. Grab, flick. The sweeping can be done in any direction. It can be done diagonally. 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. It can be done in downward movements. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 and sideways 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Grab and flick. After cleaning the affected part 30 times, it is important that the healer cleans his or her arm from the shoulder to the fingertip to avoid any chance of contamination. Sweep down from the shoulder to the fingertips, grab and flick on the inside, on the outside. Since I use my left hand for cleaning as well, I will clean the left arm from the shoulder to the fingertips and flick. When cleaning, there are a couple of things to remember. When you're cleaning an affected part of the body, do not move your hands in such a way that the dirty energy may spread to another part of the body. For example, when I'm cleaning the throat area, if I sweep with long downward sweeping motions, it is likely that the dirty energy affecting the throat could spread to the chest or the abdomen. The hand movements are localized, small movements in such a direction that the energy is moved away from other parts of the patient's body. Similarly, if I was healing the throat area, I should not be healing in such a way that the dirty energy comes toward me. I would not, for example, want to be standing on the side like this and sweeping in such a way that the dirty energy that is being removed comes onto my aura or my chakras. The ideal position is in front of the patient with your hand moving in a small localized motion in such a way that the energy does not spread to other parts of the body. After this localized sweeping is applied, the next step is to replace the old used up energy that we have removed with fresh healthy prana. Having finished the sweeping, the next step is to energize the affected part. To energize, we first have to absorb and receive pranic energies from the surrounding. To do this, Place one of your hands out, palm facing upward. You can use the right hand to receive energy and the left hand to project, or the left hand to receive energy and the right hand to project. However, before we start projecting, it is important that we first receive the energy. To do this, curl your tongue and connect the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Inhale and exhale slowly. Be aware of the center of your receiving palm. Be aware of your fingertips. Do a few cycles of deep abdominal breathing. Most of you should be able to feel a sense of pressure, warmth or heaviness on your receiving hand within a few seconds. Even if you do not feel anything, wait for a few breathing cycles and then continue. Whether you feel the energy coming in or not, your intention of receiving and absorbing energy will ensure that the energy comes in. Once you can feel the energy coming in, place your other palm in front of the affected area with the palm facing the affected part and form an intention of projecting the energy that you're receiving with your receiving hand into the affected part. To ensure that we do not get depleted, we can form an intention that we're projecting only 80% of what we receive. We can also focus a little more on the receiving hand, a little less on the projecting hand. Inhale and exhale slowly. The energizing is done for 10 breathing cycles. Inhale and exhale. One, two, 
In some cases, even before you complete energizing for 10 breathing cycles, you may feel your projecting hand being pushed away slightly. If this happens, it's a sign that there is sufficient energy in the affected part and you can stop energizing. So to summarize, the energizing is done for a maximum of 10 breathing cycles or until you feel your hand being pushed away, whichever comes first. Having finished the energizing, we repeat the cleansing process again. This is called the 30-10-30-10 technique. 30 refers to the number of times we clean the affected part. 10 refers to the number of breathing cycles for which we energize. Having completed one set, we repeat the process for another set. The sixth step of pranic healing is to stabilize. Stabilizing is needed so that the projected pranic energy remains in the affected area so the healing can continue. Without stabilizing, the energy may leak out, which makes the healing less effective than it could be. To stabilize, just visualize the energy coming out of your palm as being a very light blue or sky blue in color. Paint the affected area, the surface of the affected area with this light blue or sky blue energy with the intention of sealing the projected energy in. You can say, stabilize, stabilize, stabilize as you paint. The last step of pranic healing is to release the energy link that is created between the solar plexus area of the healer and the solar plexus area of the patient. This energy link needs to be cut so that there is no further energy interaction between healer and patient. This actually helps the healing to take place more effectively and better. To cut the energy link, you can use your hands and just form the intention of cutting the link or mentally or verbally say cut three times. Or you can combine both techniques. Cut, cut, cut. That concludes the seventh step of pranic healing and the entire healing process. When energizing, it is very important to remember the five things to avoid. The eyes should never be energized. They can be cleaned. If you have a patient who has a problem with vision, short-sightedness, long-sightedness, cataract, the eyes have to be cleaned many, many times. But energizing of the eyes is never done directly. To energize the eyes, we energize them indirectly through an energy center between the eyebrows between two energy centers at the temples and through an energy center which is at the center of the back of the head. The heart, the physical heart and an energy center which is in the center of the chest called the front heart chakra should never be energized. Once again the heart can be cleaned and the front heart chakra can be cleaned. This needs to be done when treating people with heart ailments for example. But the energizing of the heart is only done through the back. There is an energy center directly behind the front heart chakra at the back of the body called the back heart chakra. Energizing is only done through the back. Our spleen is located on the left side of the body at the level of the lowermost rib. In front of the spleen is an energy center called the front spleen chakra. Directly behind is an energy center called the back spleen chakra. These two energy centers can be cleaned but should not be energized. Directly behind the navel is an energy center called the Meng Main Chakra. This energy center has something to do with regulation of the body's blood pressure. The Meng Main Chakra can be cleaned. If you're treating somebody with high blood pressure, the Meng Main Chakra may need to be cleaned 100 to 200 times or more. But the Meng Main Chakra should not be energized. And lastly, the fifth thing to avoid or to be aware of when energizing is that if you're treating somebody who is elderly or a young child or an infant, the energizing needs to be done very gently and for a short period of time.